Take care of your dogs. So guys, we just showed you objectively the dogs doing a little bite work with these things here. I keep getting that question at times, and it's actually a scary question if I'm being honest, where people say, hey, I want my dog more aggressive. I repeat, you don't want an aggressive dog. But I was sitting here talking to Stan, he said, hey, what, what are some things that people could do to get the dog more protective? One thing I will tell you off tops is some of you sent me your dogs, and they don't look like protective dogs. So if you don't get a dog that has that root in it, do you know why I believe that I could create a protective line? Zara's dad, Bossy's cane, unfortunately he's passed. There is a picture on their page where he was doing bite work at 130 pounds, I believe, of XL Bully. So I go, okay. Plus, they bred her closer to the terrier, which I know how to bring that out. But we already, I saw something in the history that said, oh, she should be able to do this, right? Mm -hmm. And then we see Ego. He's, he's doing a good job for the most part, and he's just proof of concept. So I don't trip when he doesn't do things perfect because I need his I need his grandson. His grandson will be what we'll call perfect in my eyes, not according to your standard or some written code. But what are some things you recommend them doing to feel confident about their dog becoming more protective or being more protective in the home? <clears throat> so I think the most important thing is going to be confidence. You do not want a dog that's insecure or worried about the world around them. You need a dog that can go anywhere and be able to basically stand on his own four feet. Um, athleticism is the next thing because if you can't, if the dog's not athletic, if your dog's overweight or not healthy, conditioned right, they're not going to be able to do the things that they need to do to protect the home. Um, and then the third is going to be your bond with the dog. You have to have a type of relationship with the dog. If the dog doesn't like you, if you only see the dog for five minutes a day and you know, you're know you screaming at it, why is that dog going to want to protect you and put his life on the line for you? So you have to develop some type of bond and a relationship with the dog to have these type of things. Like Trevor said, you do not want aggression because aggression, if the dog, if you force, if you put more pressure on an aggressive dog, they can choose flight very easily because they're trying to scare you away. And we don't want that. We want that dog to know that it can get you away. Um, the pack leader, when somebody comes up, he's not wondering if he's going to win that. He knows he can win it, and he's going to do everything he can to keep his pack safe. So that's one thing that you're going to want your dog to know as well. Okay, so what we'll try to shoot, and I know some people have got some timid dogs. I had a long conversation, and it's so funny because, uh, you know, these, the guys watching, for one, thank you people, everybody who's watching. They're like, man, you one of the best dog trainers or not, I said, my man. Let me be very clear. Stan trains dogs. I wouldn't train your dog if you gave me a million dollars to be clear. It just ain't enough. I have enough stuff to work through, but you definitely want to follow Stan. Two, I thought it would be important to make sure, because I see the gap, that people knew how to better manage what's in these dogs and their dogs. Now this education, to a degree, kind of goes for all dogs. Even a Duchess and Hound, AKA the weenie dog was used for ratting. That thing go down in that hole and they a real like a real weenie dog and get busy. Y'all made them foo foo, but all the dogs for the most part, outside of your toy breeds, were created for work and can do something. Here's the challenge. You're not doing anything with your dog. And you're not figuring out what the dog needs. That's the key thing. I gave the dog some lamb shank, right? They'll 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 go quiet when the food is is uh put in there. We're talking raw, good stuff. Because Stan's here, they're like, nah, bro. I ain't trying to play with no lambing right now. <laughs> I want to go play play. Where's the fun at? That feeds their soul. Over a 72 hour time frame in my experience, if the dogs have a day of conditioning, they're normally cool. If we do a day of what I call mind development, which requires them to think, they're pretty cool. Then if we do a day of strength training, guess what? They're pretty cool. If that isn't done over three days, and mind you, sometimes this dogs do all that in one day. <laughs> but if that's not done over a 72 hour frame, your dogs become destructive. Mm -hmm. And your house then, you know, is up in shambles. But when we say we want to protect the dog, a protected dog is like you feeling safe knowing you got a pistol on you. And it but you ain't safe if you never shot the pistol. Yep. So you still in a frightened state, so you gotta go to gun classes, you gotta you need to go get your gun license, you need to go to shoot a little bit so you can get an idea of how to point that thing, how to aim, the kickback when it comes so that you don't miss if somebody is unfortunately invading your home. Confidence isn't um, a dog biting a person. Confidence actually is a dog not biting a person. 
that's the trick. It's like, yeah, my dog will, but he knows he doesn't need to. Like, <laughs> unless I'm in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and even then, he still will assess. Yeah, you don't, you don't want a dog to just be reactive because, I mean, if you got kids running around, you don't want that to trigger your dog. If your kids are screaming, you don't want that to trigger your dog. Um, you should be able to take your dog anywhere. There was actually a story of a guy who we trained his dog. He actually had him at the bar with him or a restaurant. I don't know if it was in a bar, but this guy came up and was basically talking some shit. And, you know, long story short, the dog was calm, cool, and collected until the guy gave him an alert command. And the dog hit the end of the leash, started barking, and that was enough to deter that man from trying to do anything more. And I think that's one statistic that is not shown is how many how many times did a dog's presence prevent something from going left? Even with police officers, people, how often is that undervalued, my it, thing? It, it, it is highly undervalued because again, people, nine out of 10 people actually don't know a lot about dogs. So even if a person has a dog, they don't really know nothing about their dog. Mm -hmm. So you came out, you saw a dog, that dog, especially my dogs, they have you a little word. Maybe like, you think before you move, like, yo, is it okay? Like, every question you probably ask yourself when there's no dog around, you ask yourself when there's a dog around. And that in itself lets me know that I'm safe. Because you know, I know you can move too fast. And it used to be when I had this dog named Kane, who was crazy as hell. I said, hey, whatever you do, make, don't make no fast movements, okay? <laughs> because he's not all there. And if uh, you move too quick, you could be running into some problems, just letting you know. So none of that fast moving, none, none of that stuff there. No, no spaz hands. <laughs> he's not, he's just a little nuts. So for one, again, build confidence. We'll try to do is, is some more things around confidence. Get you some equipment to train the dogs. And I've told everybody, especially ones that have messed me out of states, get you someone who knows how to do bite training and work with them and, their, and, and learn from them. Because because your dogs can bite, doesn't mean they'll bite when you need them to, unfortunately, right? Yeah, you got to put them in different situations. There's been a couple of times where you do a home invasion scenario and the dog's never bit there before and they're like, um, what am I supposed to do? Until they learn that they're supposed to do that thing. So that's why you see military and police officers doing like crazy, crazy things with their dog because you never know what you're going to encounter. And even if you do prepare your dog for all of these things, the dogs know when it's a real situation versus a training situation. So you can try to set it up as much as possible, but the dog's still going to know. But we want dogs to have confidence to know that yes, in a oh shit situation, I still can do what I need to do. And a lot of the time, the dog being there and giving you time to either get your gun or get out of the house or get into a back room, that's what's gonna be important. It's not about the dog mauling somebody and killing them. It's about you being safe. If I ever get in a situation when I'm out with Rocco and he has to bite somebody, I'm gonna go to my truck and I'm gonna whistle, hey Rocco, come on, let's go. He gonna jump in the truck and we're leaving. And that's just what we're trying to do. You because see that right there? That's the key too, being tough. That tough thing, the toughest thing you could do is keep your life safe. Mm -hmm. Just go home to your family. <laughs> I want to go home to my family and that's the end of the day that's what we're trying to do and your dog can help you do that. Um, it's just one thing you got to understand it's not all about being tough. Yeah. It's about yeah. being safe. Guys so much so much more to come. Stay tuned take your dogs as always. Thank you Stan for educating them. We got more coming. So go ahead and guys Tifa here Fit Bully TV. Stan's going to talk to you about the things you don't want to do when you when or if you get bit by a dog <laughs> and then tell him at least one great story and when you got chewed the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> just one yeah he got he be sending me all those stuff man he didn't got it, co it comes with the territory um so what you don't want to do if you're getting bit is you don't want to start moving or really making <laughs> noise for the dog you actually want to go limp so there was we can do two parts one story that one of my worst bites, this Rottweiler tried to take off my thumb. Um, I spent about 45 minutes working with this dog, like hand feeding it, she was good. Then Maddie was like, hey, let's get a video of it. I'm like, that's fine, cool. So we had her out there and she started, you know, it was fine. She jumped up on me, Maddie went to correct her, she came back down and I went to feed her a treat, asked her to sit. She didn't want to sit, so she literally, I think it's, let's see. I forget, <laughs> but whatever thumb it was, she had this part of my hand in her mouth. And when she went to buy it, we actually got on video, I went with her. If I would have tried to pull out or anything besides going with the dog and being limp, I probably wouldn't have my thumb to this day. So that's one thing you gotta do is keep your cool whenever you're in a dog's mouth and try not to like, ah, shit. It, 
that's the hardest thing in the world to do, but it's gonna keep you safe. Um, Trevor could probably attest to that because he almost lost his thumb to a puppy, and yeah. I guarantee you he wasn't screaming or you know hollering or anything. He just was like, mm. yeah, you you deal with you roll with the punches because yeah. you get punched regardless. I mean, you got to. I mean, mm -hmm. just like I got bit in the face, I was working the dog, uh, had him right here, and I was wanting to get a better bite. Bent down, he comes off, and I see him. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. So I'm trying to retreat, and he gets me right above the lip. And right after that, you finish working the dog and take care of yourself so afterwards. Why is it that you're not afraid or basically you don't get discouraged after getting bit by a dog if you teach it to bite? <laughs> because they're they're doing what you're, they're, they're being taught to do. Um, and in that specific case, it was my fault. So if you get bit by a dog when you're working with them, it's your fault. Um, you should have known where you were at. You should have not put so much pressure on the dog. There's something that you did wrong. So in this instance, um, the dog, he was known for face biting, and it's one of those things you just, you trust your abilities, and he weaved, and I thought he was gonna bob, so he oh, came and caught me. 